Um, it did just at the very height of it in March and April, we made a decision in this practice um, not to close our doors. Um, I just felt that it was um, unethical to turn away patients who have truly disabling incapacitating pain. Uh, we took a lot of precautions and instituted a lot of things and we've only loosened them up slightly now that the numbers in the greater Metro New York area are down. Uh, for a while, patient numbers really dried up. And we've seen that among multiple specialties, patients um, are not taking care of themselves because they may have a fear of going out or exposing themselves um, in a pandemic. The point is though, that migraine not only doesn't go, in, go away during a pandemic, migraine is often more manifest and patients are more symptomatic. So what we saw then is after the height of it, the worst of the worst, there was a big uptick in the number of patients we see. Yes, it is sort of a biphasic thing, you're right. And many of my patients went up for reasons I described, but some folks said, boy, COVID's been great for my head. Um, they changed their sleep schedule, but for them, that means getting more sleep because they didn't have a two hour commute into Manhattan, for example. Um, some folks who were eating on the run were actually spending time preparing healthy meals for themselves. Uh, those who weren't getting exercise, some decided to do online kind of yoga classes and meditation and things. So I think that is uh, a bit more of a minority than the group that got worse, but there are some who just, in fact, my school age kids, many of them worse than being at home on Zoom, but some of them who kind of anxiety of being around their peers, a social anxiety thing actually worsened their migraines, they loved being home. So yeah, it was a bit of a, a mixed picture.